This is a review of this Rubbermaid garden toter. I have no affiliation with Rubbermaid, but I have pretty expensive usage with this product, so I figured I'd make a review. I think the official name of it is the 8.75 cubic foot big wheel plastic yard cart. Uh, anyway, yeah, the 8.75 is, is one of the main advantages. Uh, it is a high capacity, especially versus the other two wheel carts that are available um, and why I keep coming back to this one. The ergonomics are a big advantage, especially versus a regular wheelbarrow. The, the pivot point of the wheel here is farther back, closer to the center of the uh, of the unit, so it doesn't take that much force to lift up on this side and, and move it around. Look, I can do it with, well, it's empty, but one finger versus a, a standard wheelbarrow, a lot of the weight is on your arms the whole time. Um, you definitely notice a difference. Um, a major design advantage here is the two wheels. Um, again, with a regular wheelbarrow, you're always sort of uh, fighting. Or the stability comes with your arms and shoulder and back, and there's always seems like this tendency to accidentally dump it. Um, but in this cart, you know, if you took your hands off it, 95% of the time it's just going to drop down and stay exactly where you were. Uh, it's far more stable and it's also uh, so part of the stability is that it's easy to accurately dump it goes like that and dumped it where you wanted it the main drawback is the plastic construction of course um, I've had no issues with it degrading from being stored out in the sun and the bucket holds up the sharp rocks and whatnot, um, but the wheels are definitely the weakest point. If you put a couple hundred pounds in this and you're going downhill and try to make a sharp turn, then for sure your outside wheel is going to disintegrate, as I've done it uh, three different occasions. So I've owned a number of these. One was stolen, one was incinerated, but I keep getting more. Also, regarding the plastic construction, if you're uh, in that other 5% I alluded to, if you're going downhill with the weight forward and you're sort of hanging on for dear life uh, using these feet as a brake, then the bottoms of them can tend to get scraped up and worn down. But I think you could probably ad hoc some kind of fix for that if it came to it. Um, overall, I do recommend this. and. Especially if you're only going to use it on flat ground, I think you're unlikely to run into the issues I have. If you're looking to replace the tires on your cart for whatever reason, the originals are a 20 inch diameter tire with a 2.5 inch hub width and a 5 8 inch axle hole. Uh, I haven't been able to find any steel replacements in that size exactly. Um, these tires that I have on here now are a 13 inch tire, which is the biggest I could find locally. I got them at a tractor supply. Um, and it, I wouldn't go any smaller than that. This, the business still works pretty well, um, but it does mess with the geometry of the cart a bit. And it has a lower overall bucket height, which may be advantage or disadvantage depending on your usage. Um, Seems like on my other cart, I was able to find a 15 or 16 inch uh, tire that I put on there. And that would be a much better option if you can find that. So maybe look around online a little bit more. Um, the bigger tires tend to have a wider hub width. So that tends to be the limiting factor that it's hard to find anything with, um, with a two and a half inch hub width or less. Um, you could craft yourself a longer axle out of a 5 8 inch bar rod there and just drill yourself a hole at the end for a cotter pin. Um, it would be straightforward but more work and expense. Um, but then you'd have a lot more options as far as different tires you could put on there.